This is Volusia County, Florida. Home of the Daytona International Speedway. One of the world's most famous beaches. And a local lawman who is not so quietly making some big changes to a not so small sized county. Sheriff Mike Chitwood is the man who's in charge of law enforcement around here. He has a career that has spanned decades. He's an outspoken man, a man who doesn't hold back. And as you're about to see, he's also a man who doesn't mince words. That we're allowing this man, he's not even a man, he's a scumbag. They're scumbags. Who is this guy? Yeah. For lack of a better term, he's a thieving piece of And it's not just lip service. Chitwood is also a man of action. Get back. Get back. This is Chitwood at the scene of an armed carjacking in 2019. Get a shield. Who's got a shield? Right in the middle of it with his deputies, without a bulletproof vest. Chitwood says he knows people look to him and his office to help solve a lot of their problems. But he says the reality just isn't that simple. Everything that goes wrong in society gets shoved down, shoved down to the cops. We get it. With mental health, drugs, homelessness, you think of it. People, why are cops dealing with that? Because the system's broke and we're the last line of defense against something. So are you All trying cops. to fix the system? We're trying to turn that system on its head. We wanted to find out not only what Chitwood is doing, but why. Those changes began as soon as Chitwood took the oath of office in 2017. And I'm duly qualified to hold office. The, whole office. the first one, implementing new training for his deputies, starting with the basics of how deputies respond to calls. Deputy Ryan, in Volusia County Sheriff's Office. Right out of the gate, Chitwood started with de-escalation training. I just woke up like this, and then the right. room was like this, and I don't remember anything. I got somebody here to help you, and they, they want to take you somewhere where we can get you cleaned up. Where deputies learned how to end stressful encounters peacefully. Damn. Shot fired. The training was put to a big test in June. That's when deputies engaged in a standoff with a 12-year-old boy and a 14-year-old girl, armed with an AK-47 and a shotgun. You can hear shooting at the children was not what the deputy wanted to do. Don't let me do this. Don't do this. It wasn't until they say the girl came out of the house firing her gun that they were forced to fire back. What's your name, sweetie? Rip it. What's your name? And they immediately jumped in to help her. When we first embarked on this de-escalation training and time, distance, and cover, I got yelled at and screamed at, you're going to get deputies killed, somebody's going to die. What you see is injuries to deputies have dropped by 50%. Injuries to suspects have dropped by 50%. Crime has dropped by double digits. Take a look at the results he says he's had. Use of force incidents within the Volusia County Sheriff's Office dropped from 122 the year he took office to 87 the next year and only 65 incidents in 2019. Will you come out and talk to me? Why not? Deputies got body cameras. Central Repatch Daytona. And they trained in how to deal with people who may be battling mental illness. My word is a man. All you, you put that knife down and I'll get you a beer. And the sheriff tells us he can't wait to start his own police academy this summer. <laughs> is there a playbook that you're playing from or are you just it's taking a, good it, ideas it, as they it, come along? It's, it's, I'm, not, I'm not afraid to tell you this. As a, as a Catholic schoolboy, I would probably would be punished for it. I'm not afraid to plagiarize. If I see something good around the country, we're adopting it. If I see a policy or a training issue that somebody is handling or training uh, philosophy, we're going to incorporate that. Why haven't more departments adopted the policies that you've implemented and been successful? Uh, fear of change, and we've always done it this way, and this is the way it's going to be. And, and, and that is something I always hated. I hated it when I was a young cop hearing somebody say, well, why are we doing this? This is kind of stupid. And have somebody say, shut up, kid. This is the way we've always done it. We've done it this way for 50 years. Yeah. One Charlie, 24 Central. Deputy Kaylin Darcy says she has gone through all of this modified training. What do you think of your career choice two years in? I love it. But get this, she says that career choice has deeply affected her personal life. You said being a, being a cop, you've lost a couple friends over that. I have. Not because of what she does, but how she does it. Why can't you shoot him in the leg? Why couldn't you have shot him in the arm? Mm -hmm. Well, because when someone's pointing a gun at me, I'm not. Your heart rate's elevated on top of that. 
so now you're stressed trying to shoot a gun out of someone's hand that's a little four Do you use circle. that as an education point with your friends? I try to, and a lot of the times they don't, they don't want to listen. And so that's where I've lost most of my friends is they didn't want to hear the explanation I had. Do solemnly swear or affirm. And one of the big changes so, in how Chitwood wants exactly deputies to interact with the community centers around implicit bias. Hey, buddy. That training took a turn in September of 2020. If you're not in any trouble or anything, there is a, a burglary that happened. You kind of fit the description. Let me just make really? Let me just make sure that you're not him, okay? Body camera footage captured the moment a Volusia County Sheriff's deputy stopped a man named Joseph Griffin while he was out jogging. Literally, they said white tank top, black shorts. Griffin started streaming the incident live on Facebook. Do you mind sending it down here? And the deputy then turned Griffin around and zip tied his wrists. Just for now, I'm going to detain you. Look, you're not you're, you're you're not under arrest. I'm detaining you right now because you fit the description, okay? okay. Just hang tight for me, okay, buddy? 17 minutes after being stopped, Griffin was cleared and allowed to leave with an apology. I just want to say thank you. Because not everybody is uh, that understanding and respectful. The way we stopped Mr. Griffin is the way we would stop a white guy, a black guy, Hispanic guy, or a purple guy. Chit would eventually offer Griffin a job with the sheriff's office, which he turned down. Empathy, empathy, empathy. But he did accept a chance to speak with deputies during their implicit bias training about good communication regardless of the person's skin color. Putting yourself in other people's shoes, whether you are the person being detained or you're the officer doing the detaining, uh, just think as if it were you on the other side. What was your implicit bias training like? I think if someone's someone's racist and they know they're racist, it's not going to help. But for like the normal person who goes around every day, the normal cop who's like, I have no biases, I'm not racist, I'm equal to everyone, it kind of can be an eye opener to say, hey, maybe you do have some biases. Was it an eye-opener for you? It was, yeah, because yeah. you don't, you grow up thinking little beat-down Honda is a, either an addict or a drug dealer or something like that. And more often times than not, it's a college kid that mm -hmm. couldn't afford a nicer car. But it's like those little, little things that are in the back of your head that you grew up seeing on either TV and in the media, on Facebook, mm -hmm. like this kind of car equals drug dealer this kind of car equals this 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 and it makes you think like no <laughs> that's not how it is so do you find yourself checking yourself as you approach a scene yeah i do because you'll walk up to a house that could be in a rundown neighborhood and you'll think again maybe it's the drug area and you walk up and it's this little grandma who has just lived there for 50 years and mm -hmm. the bad neighborhood grew around her chitwood says all of this training is just the beginning are we perfect hell no but we, I think we were all striving for perfection, not mediocrity. There is a lot to discuss here, and we'd like to hear your opinions. Drop a comment below and make sure you hit subscribe to stay up to date with Solutionaries.